Hey y'all, it's Charlie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be doing a video all about how to pass your flight attendant video interview. This is like the thousandth time that I've tried to film this video, so hopefully everything turns out right and nobody comes barging into our house because that's what happened the last two times I tried to record this. But everyone's gone right now, so let me see if I can get this done before my whole entire family comes back. If you like flight attendant videos, I'm doing a whole series right now on how to become a flight attendant and I also have some vlogs up on my channel that I'm sure you would like. With all that being said, let's go. <sighs> hey guys, it's Charlie. It's been a couple of days since I filmed this video and I am just now noticing that I have a eyelash that is flapping in the breeze the whole time. I was gonna go back and re-record it, but I honestly think that this video is so good that I won't be able to recreate it. And I was having so much fun giving this advice in the video and I think that it was so helpful. I don't want to try to recreate the video by trying to copy everything that I said. I am really proud of this video. So, even though I had an eyelash that was literally hanging on for dear life the whole entire video, I hope that y'all can ignore it and get some help out of this video. If you end up not being able to concentrate, um, sorry. If you see my vlogs on my channel, you know that I always try to be really, really realistic and genuine and real. And if I would have noticed this the same day that I recorded that video, I absolutely would have re-recorded it. But that was filmed weeks ago and I, I, I really think it's a really good video. I put on the same outfit. I tried to do my makeup the same. I tried to do my hair the same so I could redo this video. And I'm looking at it and I don't want to do that. It's so embarrassing, but it's so funny. I'm going to leave it up because I think this video was probably one of the best videos I ever filmed, like helpfulness wise and I just want to leave it up so that's that um leave a leave a bird emoji in the comment section if you like this video because that's how my eyelash was flying away just like a bird <laughs> all right let's get back into the video <laughs> Okay, your flight attendant video interview. First off, I want to say congratulations for making it this far. I know how hard it is to become a flight attendant and this is pretty much your first step. I'm so, so proud of you for making it this far, honestly. One thing I want to say is they already saw your resume. They already think that you're qualified for the job. Now you just got to show up and be that person that you told them you were on your resume. This is the time to back up everything that you said in your resume and to let your personality shine through a little before you get invited to that face-to-face. Okay, so you got invited to your video interview, the date's coming up, what you need to do now or what you should have done while you are applying to airlines is do your research. Research, research, research. You need to look up the airline's core values, the mission statement. All the history is not that important, but it looks really good if you're able to toss it into some of the questions that they may ask you. And I have about three questions that you absolutely need to know the answer to and I'm gonna say those towards the end of this video. But like I said, research, research, research. It is very, very important to know like core values and mission statements and things like that. If you're trying to show them why you're right for the company, you need to know about the company. So make sure that you're going on the company's website and Googling and all that good stuff. Not only is that something that you should know if you want to work for that company, it's going to make you look really good that you really, really want this job if you know something about the company. Next, you need to practice. Now, I don't want you going in there sounding like a robot, being all nervous and jittery and trying to remember what exactly you practice, but it would be really wise to go online and look at Glassdoor and Indeed and forums and Facebook groups and all of that and try to find any information you can about the types of questions they will ask you. After you got a list of the questions, go over them. Don't over practice or rehearse, practice. You don't need to be trying to remember the lines during your interview. That's not gonna come off as authentic. You need to show them your real self and you can't do that if you're trying to remember some made up story that you came up with to answer a question. Okay, now we're gonna get deeper into this process and we're talking about your setting. Now, when you're doing your video interview, sometimes they're a little different. When I did my video interviews, I had a group interview where it was like, maybe 15 of us on Zoom and they would ask us each one question. There's also some where you have to record your answer and they'll watch it back later so it's not in real time. And I've also had one when it was just a one-on-one -on -one Zoom type interview. So it can come in 
many different ways but what's really important is your setting this right here is not too bad i have a white background my bed's made it looks nice it's not too much going on but if i already have a white wall why don't i just move all my stuff over there and make sure i'm in frame and it just looks like a plain white background i think that looks nice honestly like i said this isn't bad this isn't bad at all but this leaves room for embarrassment <laughs> because ain't no telling what I could have on my bed. I could have a half-eaten burrito back there or something. So I think it's just better to have a nice plain background. I think white looks really good because it makes your features pop and not saying it's all about looks, but if you want to get the job, you need to look a little snazzy. You wanna look your best. Also with your setting, make sure that you have really, really good and strong Wi-Fi. Also make sure that you have really good lighting. I have two ring lights on me right now and that's why it looks so bright. Um, you can be in front of a window or just anywhere that has good lighting. They want to see you, they need to see you. And of course, make sure that it's somewhere quiet. I did one of my interviews in a hotel because I was on a layover because I was already a flight attendant and I was so nervous that housekeeping was going to come in while I was doing my interview. So you need to make sure you have a nice quiet place to do the interview. So now that we know that they can see you because you're in your great setting with the nice lighting, we need to talk about what you're going to be wearing. Now, for today's video, since I'm talking about interviews, I decided to wear a blazer. This is a pink blazer. This is not what I wore for my interview. You can, if you choose to. I personally would not, just because I know all of the airlines that I interviewed for told us pretty much what to wear. They wanted to see us in dark colors. And though, yes, this is showing, oh, she looks good in pink. They don't care if I look good in pink. Oh, she's fashion forward. They don't care if I'm fashion forward. Oh, she wants to stand out. That's not the point of wearing uniforms. The point of uniforms is to look uniform. So if I show up in this pink blazer when they told me to wear black, blue, or gray, yeah, she's cute, but she can't listen. It doesn't matter if she's not gonna do what we ask of her, if she's not gonna be in compliance. We have so many different rules on how we have to look in uniform. And if I'm not gonna listen at an interview, what makes them think that I'm gonna listen when I get on the line? What you should do is read the emails if they told you what to wear and what not to wear. And if they didn't, I would suggest dark colors, black, navy blues, grays, things like that. Females, you can wear a skirt suit, you can wear a pantsuit, or you can wear a dress as long as you look professional. And for our males, I would suggest, just me, a full suit. I know some dudes don't like wearing, maybe even a sports coat, I guess. It depends on how nice you look. I would probably wear a full suit though. And make sure your tie is cute, but not doing too much. Not distracting from what you have to say. They need to take you seriously. They're not gonna take you seriously if you're wearing like some mini top with Squidward on it. I don't know, why would I say Squidward? Why not say SpongeBob? Anyways, okay. now we're jumping back to the ladies. Now we're talking about hair and makeup. My hair looks great today. It's a fresh new wig, sis. I look great. But I wouldn't wear my hair all down. It's hanging in my face, things like that. I wouldn't do that for an interview. I would have it pulled back into a ponytail and I could wear it like this or I could go ahead and put it into a bun, obviously a little neater than that. Especially since it's a video, you need to have it pulled out of your face so they can see you. Now we're talking about male hair. Sorry you guys, I gotta jump back and forth. I can't leave my guys out because I know there's so many male flight attendants who also watch my videos, so what's up? Guys, make sure you get a nice fresh haircut for your interview and make sure that your facial hair is cleanly shaven. I'm not saying that you have to be a bare butt bait, bear, what? <laughs> I'm not saying that you have to have a complete baby face, but if you do have facial hair, make sure it's nice and trimmed up and nice looking. Makeup, ladies. And gentlemen, make sure that you're wearing natural looking makeup. I probably wouldn't wear these lashes. I wouldn't wear these lashes because they are literally hanging off my face. Because they're a little bit dramatic, but this isn't a bad makeup look. I don't think it's doing too much, especially for the video interview. It doesn't look bad from here. But I think I would tone down the lashes just a little bit for an interview. Everyone says do a red lip. I didn't do a red lip on any of my interviews and I've gotten three CJOs right now, so. It does look nice. Red makes everyone look good, but I would just say make sure you're wearing something that complements your outfit. Since this is a video interview and it's not like in person where we have to wear our face mask and everything, I would go ahead and go all out with the makeup, but do it in a natural way. Also, you do not have to wear makeup. As for jewelry, males, I do not think that you should wear any jewelry other than like a wedding band and a watch. 
female earrings, I would say some small little studs, small pearls, things like that. Shoes, like I said, this is your video interview, but I feel better when I'm wearing heels. Even though this is a video interview, I think that it'll be best to be dressed head to toe. I know some people say it doesn't matter if they can't see it. What if your camera falls down? <laughs> what if your laptop, like for some reason, just like pans down and they can see that you're sitting there in your Hello Kitty underwear? I have not had an airline to ask me to show that I'm wearing clothes underneath what they can see, but just in case you decide to stand up for something or like you need to be wearing pants, I would I would put on pants. Okay, another thing I want to say about your flight attendant video interview is that you need to smile and make eye contact. Right now, I can tell you about 80% of this video, I've been looking at my viewfinder instead of looking you in your beautiful, beautiful faces. So don't be like me. If you have your laptop screen up, look into the webcam. Do not look down there at yourself. I know it is easier to do that, especially since on Zoom, you can see the person you're talking to a lot bigger and you're trying to like look them in the eye, but you're not actually looking them in the eye because their eyes would be up there. <laughs> Do not ramble in your answers. If you're telling a story, don't just be everywhere and jump in and, oh, I forgot to tell you this and that, 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 and this, is this, and that story. I know you've heard of the STAR method if you've watched other videos similar to this one, so I'm gonna tell you this too. STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. This is a good way to answer questions because it's gonna help you not ramble. So I'm gonna see if I can come up with an example of the star method right now. So someone was sitting in the bulkhead. If you're sitting in the bulkhead, you're not allowed to have your bag in your lap or in front of you because there is no seat in front of you. So my situation would be, I had a passenger who was sitting at the bulkhead who refused to put their bag in the overhead bin. Situation, I'm tasked with making sure that everyone has their items stowed so everyone can be safe. Now also note that, notice that I mentioned that this is about safety. So with that task, I have to go to this passenger and ask them to put their bag in the overhead bin. So that is my action. So I would go to him, sir, due to you being in the bulkhead, for your safety, I'm gonna have to ask you to put your bag in the overhead bin because you do not have a seat in front of you. If there was something to happen, turbulence or anything like that, I wouldn't want your bag to be flying all over the place to harm you or others. Now, let's say that this is a unicorn who actually listened to whatever I just said because you know how passengers are. So he says, okay, I'm sorry, I forgot, no problem. He gets whatever he needs out of there and I go ahead and put it in the overhead bin for him. That is our result. The passenger was safe, no one got harmed, his bag didn't go flying, it was not a projectile flying through the cabin. <laughs> so that is the star method. Sorry, that wasn't a really good example, I don't think. I just came up with that example off the top of my head. It probably could have been a little better, but that's really just how to break down the star method. First off, they're looking for it. They know the star method. That's how they want you to answer the question. And they know that you've watched videos like this and they know that you know that you should be using the STAR method. Okay guys, we're almost done. So now I'm gonna tell you about three questions that I know they're gonna ask. That I've been asked this in all three of my video and face-to-face -face interviews. Okay, so if I look different or the lighting is different or the background's different, it's because I had to take a break. I had technical difficulties with my camera and now my family's home, so my energy's a little different because I don't like filming with other people in the house, but it's fine. I'm gonna get through this because I really want you guys to get the job. Now, do not remember where I was, so I'm just gonna take a guess. Hopefully, when I edit this all together, it'll make sense. I think what I was telling you guys about is the three questions that you absolutely need to know the answers to. Question number one, tell me about yourself. Now, you could go on there and say that you like long walks on the beach and that you're a Libra and tacos are your favorite food, but they don't care about that. So this is really when you just wanna brag about yourself or you wanna read all the stuff off your resume and put it in a little bio format. For example, my name is Charlie, I'm 24 years old. I've been in the United States Air Force Reserves for four years. I have a degree in nursing. So you're really just putting a face to your resume. You're bragging about yourself, you're throwing in little things. You're really just trying to sell yourself at that point. The second question is, why do you want to be a flight attendant? Now, you have to have an answer to this question and it can't be because I want your free flight benefits. This is when you start telling them how you fit right for that position. I wanna be a flight attendant because I love customer service based jobs. I worked in the customer service based job in the military. Being in nursing, I was always working with different people. I was looking for different jobs that incorporated safety and customer service and I came up with the idea to become a flight attendant. I started being a flight attendant and I absolutely loved it. So you're really just 
expressing your passion that you have for the job and all the aspects of the job, not just getting to travel for free. Cause it's not just travel and it's not just, I wanna see the world and meet people and I love people. It is customer service, it's serving people, not just meeting people. It's the attention to detail, it's safety. It's so much more than just, I like to travel. And the third question that they're for sure gonna ask you is why do you wanna be a flight attendant for this company? Now, the most recent interview that I did, when they asked me why did I wanna be a flight attendant for that company, I had a lot to say. And this is when that research that you did really, really comes in handy. So you could say, when I looked up your airline's core values, I really appreciate how much you guys valued integrity or honesty. So that's when you're using all the things that you looked up inside of your answer. So when they ask you, why do you wanna be a flight attendant for their company, you can pretty much brag on their company and say, this company's the best and I always strive to be the best. And yes, that sounds like you're just like kissing butt, but honestly, you should try to go for a company that you really, really love. That's what I did when I did my interview. When they asked me why did I wanna work for that company, I said that I appreciate how much they value integrity and always being the best and always getting better because that's what I do in my life. And I really just worked in the fact that I had already researched the company into my answer. So try to find a way to do that and I think you'll be successful. So those are just three questions that I know for sure they're gonna ask you. They're also gonna ask you some situational based questions, which I can't give you any examples of that because I don't want to accidentally tell you some things that they might tell you in your interview because that's not what this video is. I'm not trying to give anyone an unfair advantage. And the final thing is to be polite. You need to be super duper nice when they come on the camera, when you're thanking them after the interview. Thank you so much for taking out the time to interview me. Just be super duper nice because they want to hire nice people because they need you to be nice as a flight attendant. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good luck again on your video interview. I'm sure you'll do great. Make sure you watch my next video in this series, which is going to be all about the face-to-face -face interview. I'm sure you guys are going to do amazing on your video interview and make sure you keep me updated. Good luck again. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.